What's up nerds and welcome to San Engineering. You're watching Chemical Process Analysis. Hexavalent chromium is the plus 6 oxidation state of chromium metal. It's a highly toxic carcinogen formed during metal heating processes such as welding. You may have heard of this compound if you've seen Aaron Brockovich, the movie about the Hinkley groundwater contamination incident, in which PG&E dumped about 370 million gallons of chromium tainted wastewater into waters around the town. Chromium-6 compounds are highly dangerous because they are toxic and cause cancers. As engineers, we have to figure out a way to effectively treat a stream of wastewater containing chromium from a metal finishing plant. The wastewater stream is fed to a treatment unit that removes 95% of the chromium in the feed and recycles it to the plant. We are to draw the process flow diagram and solve the mass balance for this system. As usual, I expect you to try it by yourself first, and then I'll give you some tips on how to solve this by hand, Excel, and Python. The equations we use are, of course, the equations of mass balance. As always, when in doubt, n equals out. Before we start, let me remind you that there are many ways to solve a problem. You may have already been conditioned to solve a certain way, which can be good or bad. For instance, it says recycle, so that might allow you to think that there is a recycle stream in the system. Hold on, let's read it carefully. A stream contains 5 weight percent of chromium. Let's draw this as our first stream and it's fed to a treatment unit that removes 95 Hey nerds, while editing the video, I fortunately caught a mistake so I can tell you guys before you make your own mistake, but I'm actually really glad that not only that I caught the mistake, but I'm really glad that I made the mistake because this is the epitome of what can go wrong in chemical engineering mass balance calculations. So the mistake is, I wrote x1 equals 0.515. But that is not correct, it is 0 0.0515 because 5.15 weight percent chromium means it is divided by 100, so it's 0 0.0515. Okay, so x1, x2, and x3 they're all the same, but x1 is actually 0 0.0515. What would happen if you made that mistake on the exam? Well, then your first equation would be wrong, and then the rest of it would be entirely wrong. So be really careful with those mistakes, okay? Let's draw this as our first stream, and it's fed to a treatment unit that removes 95% of the chromium. Oh, that's great, we're actually treating the chromium. The residual liquid stream is sent to a waste lagoon, and the unit has a maximum capacity. Okay, I'm not drawing anything yet because I want to have a clear picture in my mind before I start. If it exceeds the capacity, then the excess bypasses the unit. Aha! So before we treat the chromium, we must have a bypass that recombines with the output. Notice the if-then statement. This may be useful to us later. As explained in previous videos, recall that the mass fractions are the same for each stream of a bypass. Now let's finish labeling our diagram. Part of stream 2 enters the treatment unit to remove chromium, and stream 3 bypasses the system to the mixing point, which is combined with stream 5 to produce the final treated water, stream 6. Now if you got this far, then definitely try to solve the rest of the mass balance by yourself. Remember that the goal is to treat the chromium. That means we want to have x6 to be as small as possible. Usually the first thing I start with is the overall mass balance, but we actually have a clue in this problem. 95% of the chromium that is fed to the system is removed and recycled to the plant. We have to translate the statement into an equation. Unfortunately, if I give you the following answer, you're engaging in pseudo-studying. So that is why I highly, highly encourage you to think about it yourself before moving on. Seriously, put the video away for a while and see if you can think about it by yourself. Well, because I'm nice, and well, everyone's got to start somewhere, I'm going to tell you what I think. This statement means that the chromium fed to the reactor in stream 2, 95% of this is removed, which is M.4. We also don't have any information for a basis, so we can assume it's running at maximum capacity, such that M.2 is 4,500 kilograms per hour which means we can actually solve for m.4. So now we can do the overall mass balance. You're applying the equations in the top left, your in equals out and your out equals in. We algebraically solve for mass flow rate and mass fraction in stream six, the treated wastewater. Notice how considerably small x6 is. We have successfully treated waste chromium from about five to 1%. Okay, if you're following along with the Felder problem, we just finished parts A and B, and now we're doing part C, 
which is to calculate the flow rate of the liquid to the waste lagoon and the mass fraction of the chromium in this liquid for varying from 1,000 to 10,000 kilograms per hour. So I made this nice little table in Excel, varying it from 1,000 to 10,000. We have an if statement. If M1 is less than or equal to 4,500, then M2 equals M1. And if M1 is greater than 4,500, then M2 is just 4,500. So now from 5,000 and above, M.2 is going to be 4,500. Cool. So that means it reached its maximum capacity. And we can use these equations that we wrote, and you can copy and paste them in Excel, and calculate M.4. So we can use the variables and the power of Excel to do this magically. So I'm going to type in the constants that we know for X2, and then I can type in C3, and then just drag it down just like that. And now we have m.6 which is going to be m.1 minus m.4 enter and then drag it down all the way again perfect and then the last equation a little bit of algebra in my head i'm just going to do equals x1 which is uh, 0 0.0515 times m1 minus x4 which is uh what is x4 it's just one it's just 1, so times m.4, which is right there, divided by x uh, m6, and that gives us x6. And then again, drag it all the way down, and these are our answers. We just got to plot it by highlighting this column and highlighting that column, and then you can use a shortcut, control and D, or just plot it just like that. And that is our beautiful plot. And we can, you know, I'll speed up this next part, so I'll just show how to you know, make it nice and pretty, but that is exactly what we need. I know this is a little bit fast, but it's efficient because we're engineers, right? And now we're gonna try Python. So y'all, you're gonna have to bear with me because I'm still developing my pedagogy for programming. So I'm just going to narrate what I type. I'm starting by just jumping right into Python and importing all the libraries. The most important ones are math and matplotlib. And I always start by writing my knowns. So we have m1, x1, careful, here I am doing the same mistake again, 0 0.0515, x2 equals x1, x3 is also equal to x1, m2, we know the flow rates, so that's our initial one. And I'm going to go ahead and resolve part A and part B, and which is the equations we calculated just like before. So we have the equations, m4 equals 0.95 times x2 times m2, m6 equals m1 minus m4, x6 equals x1 times m1 minus m4 divided by m6. And then we can display this results, these results and then uh, just print what we have before, m4 equals the value for m4. I quite like Python just because of variables. Uh, and programming in general. Variables are just so much fun to work with. And then we can change M6 and X6. So those are the answers, hopefully, that we got before. Okay, so now I'm going to print these results. Cool. Remember in Excel when we were writing the equations for M2, we said if M1 is less than or equal to 4,500, then M2 equals M1. And if it exceeds 4,500, then M2 equals 4,500. That's the bypass. So now we're going to do the exact same thing in Python with a for loop and an if statement. So I'm going to do my best to explain the following code. But again, y'all are going to have to bear with me. I'm not really sure how to explain this effectively yet. But I'll be sure to put all of this in the description. So I'm starting by declaring my variables M2 max and M1 and M2 as vectors. So we're starting at 1000 kilograms per hour. And now I'm building a vector by using a for loop that's size 10 because 11 minus 1 is 10. And what this append line does is the equivalent of building the vector in Excel from 1000 to 10,000 by appending the value of M for each step of the vector. And now we're doing none other than the conditional by writing an if statement. So again, if M1 is less than or equal to 4500, then M2 is going to be appended to a value equal to that of M1. And if it's greater than 4,500, it's going to be just 4,500. 
So we're appending this inside each vector, each value inside the vector rather. And then we now hopefully have a complete uh, vector for M1 and M2. And we can write another vector for the calculation for M4, just like in Excel. I serendipitously happen to just match the same, almost the same exact rate in Python and Excel. So the last one is X6. Um, I don't like the way I wrote that, that line for X6 because I had to calculate it element by element, but I'm just going to plot the results just like before. So I'm going to do plt.plot for M1 and M6, and then label my figure. You can actually use LaTeX by calling the dollar sign, and it's going to format it in LaTeX. The X label and the Y label, X6 and M.6. And then lastly, show the results. Cross our fingers, hope that it works. Got to use backslash for backslash for LaTeX. And we finished, yay, we have our nice beautiful figure. All right, nerds, we're done with this problem. We wrote the whole last math balance. We derived all the equations and solved them algebraically. Again, I'm sort of glad that I, you know, made that mistake because making a mistake like saying X1 is 5% versus 50% and saying it's 0.05 versus 0.5, you know, that's very, very common. And unfortunately, nowadays, that's a very typical exam um, mistake as well as homework. So um, definitely, you know, um, practicing will help you get through those like tough problems and stuff. And then we also did an Excel um, because in engineering, you're probably going to have to use some kind of spreadsheet software and calculate lots of different equations. And then also Python um, as a way to automate it because I think that um, programming and you know, using programming languages is the future of chemical engineering and engineering in general. Um, I think programming is extremely useful. And I don't know if you noticed, but I uh, actually gave you guys a way to skip a lot of steps for the mass balance. So we actually skipped a lot of equations that we don't really need. And that made the equations solving and the editing for me and the Python much easier. And uh, I like to use Python because it's free, it's open source. Um, as opposed to MATLAB. I love MATLAB, but you know, it's not free. As a little closing announcement, um, please make sure to check the links in the description. I try to like organize everything, including all the relevant links, updates, all the code, and my latest um, social media handles. So you can now contact me with my email and uh, go on Facebook, Instagram, things like that. As of now, pretty much everything I use is just Sanctioneering, but also I'm gonna leave some other sites such as the reddit for chemi and chemical engineering guy for other resources that you can ask questions because i'm only one channel and there's tons of other resources out there if you enjoyed this or thought it was helpful please leave a comment not only um for the whole youtube algorithm thingy i'm sure you're aware of that but for me it's really good feedback because i'm trying to improve my speaking and uh teaching skills so please definitely give me some feedback by leaving a comment and if you enjoyed this don't forget to share this with their friends, family, and dog.